Welcome back to FTBL Culture. It's your boy, Culture Cams. Listen, I've been doing these episodes where we have been speaking about the players that have done well this season. I did a whole award ceremony. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. But it's time. We have passed the halfway stage of the season. We need to talk about the biggest disappointments. And there is some big names on this list. And I know who you guys are thinking of straight away. We are gonna get into this one. Let's go. So at number five, I have a player that I don't think too many people should be surprised. I didn't wanna put him in here because really and truly, he was terrible in a way last season, but this was meant to be his redemption year. And that is Fabinho. Fabinho, Fabinho, Fabinho. Listen, this guy was the one that was in conversations with Rodri and the top DMs. Now he's not even in the question. A Casemiro come into town and removed him. He, he removed him the first game of the season. I said, Casemiro is here. Fabinho is not safe in his own ends anymore. He's not safe and he has proved that. He has completely had a shambles of a year to the point where an 18 year old boy from the academy is now starting in his position. All the talk about Thomas Partey, Rodri Casemiro, Declan Rice. I don't even know where this guy sits in this conversation. It's absolutely scary for him. It's got to a point where Liverpool fans are actually very comfortable with this guy being one of the players that is part of a massive exodus in the summer. Who would have really thought that about 18 months ago where this guy was absolutely unreal? Any counter-attack, Fabinho is there. They're chasing them all the major awards, winning Premier Leagues, all of those type of things. You talk about who were the key players in making Liverpool this unbelievable side that they were. The, the inclusion of Alisson, the inclusion of Van Dijk, of course Mo Salah's Mane, but you could have never forgotten the importance of Fabinho and now, Listen, apparently he's 28. I need to see his passport. I need to see his passport because he's looking 38 to me. Do you know what I mean? So it's absolutely wild. I'm sorry, Fabinho, you're number five. At number four, we have Bernardo Silva. And this situation is a really, really weird one because at this stage last season, we were generally talking about this guy potentially being the player of the year. It was neck and neck between him and Mo Salah. I remember that performance against Watford just before Christmas. It, he was looking the shoe in at that point. He was genuinely looking like the best player in the Premier League. I even remember Pep Guardiola saying he's the best player in the world. The praise was so high. And then there's always been this, this little murmur that he doesn't want to play for Man City. He wants to go to Barcelona. He's just not really feeling it. You're seeing him get caught on street videos here, there, everywhere. He's such a random guy. But the situation is he doesn't look that happy at the club anymore. And it's now starting to show on the performances. When you think about Bernardo Silva, you think about influence, dribbling, getting on the ball, making things happen. Now, I'm not seeing hardly any of that. Whether he's playing on the right, on the left, centre midfield, in the pivot, wherever he is, his influence is, has diminished, really. And it's super disappointing to see because he is one of those players in the Premier League which you say, capture the eye. You know, they pass the eye test. They, do, they get numbers, but the eye test is what it's really about. And so far this season, he is not showing that. And listen, we have a long way to go. We know Manchester City are in the title race. They sniff blood. But I don't know if that inspiration is going to come from Bernardo. Right now, I'm thinking, can KDB raise the level? Can Haaland raise the level of them? And Bernardo seems to be going under the radar. He seems to just slide through. But that's what you tend to get with some of these type of players. They are fan favourites. And when you're a fan favourite, you do get away with murder. And I think Bernardo is one of those players. So that is why he is my number four. At number three, we have Mason Mount. And this one hurts me to say because I am a fan of Mason Mount. I think he has been super important to Chelsea in the last two seasons. I believe he won player of the year both seasons. The assist in the Champions League final. He has been so key to them and I often think he is seen as a scapegoat for what Chelsea have done negatively all the time. But this season, I've got to agree with them that it has not been the best for him. This season, I mean, you look at last season, he had 11 goals, 10 assists in the Premier League. He was the most productive player for Chelsea over the past few seasons. 
But this year, he just looks absolutely shot off his confidence. And I genuinely mean it that he is struggling to make three, four, five yard passes at the moment. His energy levels, which is usually what you associate Mason Mount with, doesn't look as high. And at the moment, he's currently going through a contract dispute with Chelsea, where it's been reported that he rejected 200k offer from Chelsea. So if he's looking for a massive pay rise, these performances are not going to help. And Chelsea are spending money on players in his position. And you know Todd Bowley still has a, probably another 600 million to spend anyway. So Mason Mount's position is not certified. This is a Cobham legend. This is the inspiration to everyone in Cobham at the moment but it is not going well and I cannot really see it turning around. The fans have turned on him. I'm joining Chelsea Spaces and they are screaming at Mason Mount. They are going crazy. Twitter Spaces, Instagram Lives, everything is on Mason Mount's back at the moment and I'm not sure he can override this one. I mean, even for England, I do not think he was impressive at the World Cup to the point where people are calling for this guy not to have any minutes on the pitch. He's going through a rough period and I liken it to what Marcus Rashford went through at Man United last year. Whether everyone turning on you, backs against the wall, how will you rise? We have seen Rashford's reaction this season. Can Mason Mount give maybe just half of that? Last season, he had 11 goals, 10 assists in 32 games. So far in 20 games, he has three goals, two assists. And look, I do not associate Mount as a stat machine. However, after making 21 goal contributions last year, you thought maybe this will be the year he kicks on and puts even more numbers down. In a, in a way to the old Chelsea number eight, Frank Lampard. But it has not worked that way. And hopefully, for Mason Mount's sake, it does in the future. At number two, we have Hyun Min Son. Wow. Now, when I'm talking about this top two, I'm talking about serious, serious drop-offs. I mean, these are players that were on absolute cloud nine last season. And of course, Son won the golden boot with 23 goals last season. He was, we know him as one of the league's most clinical finishers. And my, as my production would say, he says he's one of the top five finishers in Premier League history. I don't know about that. That's complete waffle in my opinion. That's way too far. However, he is a deadly finisher and usually if Son gets a chance, right foot, left foot, he's putting in the back of the net. But this season, he has been absolutely atrocious. There's no other way to describe it. He has been a complete passenger in anything Spurs are doing this season. And this Harry Kane carry job, I can't believe I didn't mention him in my awards last, um, last week because he is carrying that club without the help of Son in any way. Out of his four league goals, Son scored three of them in one game. And that was in a 20 minute cameo against Leicester, who were absolutely on their knees at that point, by the way. And he thought he was back. You ain't back, buddy. You ain't back. People are talking about world-class, potentially can he move on and play at another level? He's elite. There was so much talk about what Son's ceiling is. He's one of them players that went from so underrated and because everyone thought he was underrated, they started overrating him. And there was no balance with, with Son. I've always thought he's a good player, not world-class, but he can contribute well, he can score goals. Everyone was saying he's world-class last season, all this talk, not me, and most certainly not his dad. His dad said, listen, when his dad heard that Son is, thinks he's world-class, he laughed, him, he laughed him out of the room. He said, bro, go, go back and play your PlayStation. You ain't world-class, go on the train if we're going to train. Will Spurs see another better version of Son? I do not think so. I think he has reached his peak. He's 29 years old, approaching 30. I think if Spurs are looking to cash in on any player this summer, word to Fuad, I think you have to start looking at Son because he's somebody that might have some value. I mean, you could send him to Syria, go play for AC Milan when Rafael Liao leaves or Napoli when Cavara leaves or whatever. There's a home for him. There's a place for him. But the Real Madrid's, the Barcelona's, don't joke with that one. And at number one, I think you guys should know who it is. You should see by the smile on my face, you know who it is. It's none other than Mohamed Salah. 
feel like I won this one, you know. I, feel, I genuinely feel like I won this one. Like, look, I like the dude. He's a cool dude. But I've warned people. I warned people about this guy. And I got sticks. I got stick for it. You know, every time he'll score a goal, this person's coming in my mention. This person's coming. I'm getting attacked left, right and centre. I ain't heard you guys lately. As he ain't scored in a minute. I ain't seen none of that lately. And listen, the reason for it is simple as that. It's about what I say all the time. Salah's influence on a game is minimal, in my opinion. And people will say, well, look at his numbers. He gets stats, gets goals and assists. I always say, do not lie to your eyes. And this is another situation where that is perfectly valid. Salah is having a disastrous season for Liverpool. And Liverpool are 10th, 11th. They're fighting to be in the top half. They're looking for inspiration. The guys are on the ball looking at, where's, where, where's my best player? Where is he? Salah's nowhere to be found. He's hanging by the touchline. And a lot of people are saying, you know, he's playing a different role. He has to play wider. Oh, so he has to finally play like a winger. I mean, that's what it, it says it on his, that's what it says on the textbook. On the wingers, you play on the wing. Mo Salah for the last three, four, five seasons, He's basically playing in that inverted role, getting touches in the box. Trent is spamming it this way. Robertson is spamming it that way. Firmino is flicking it that way. He's getting all the benefits. But this year, when the focus is on him, the attention is on him, getting doubled up, having to actually create for the team and inspire them, he's nowhere to be found. And all the talk is going to be about Gakpo. The guy just got there. The Nunes, the guy just got there. They have a vet. They have a person that people say is in the all-time Premier League team. He's not, he's in his peak, he's still in his prime. Just like I mentioned with, with Son, he was the Golden Boot winner, joint Golden Boot. He scored 23 goals, 13 assists. They went for the quadruple. But after the AFCON, he was terrible. Mo Salah has been terrible for a whole, over a year now. And again, people will point out he has 20-something goals and assists this season, goal contributions. We know the truth. You can see it game in, game out. Salah is not performing at the level which you would expect. Now, will it change if Liverpool improve? Maybe. But I don't see Liverpool improving anytime soon. And if they want to even get Europa League football, they're going to need him to pull his finger out and really perform. And you know, some people say it's the Christmas curse. Hey, it's been way longer than that now. It's been way, we can't even say it's the Christmas curse. And he's still going to do it next year anyway. We're still going to see a picture of him out by the Christmas tree. So it doesn't really matter. He's going to do it every single season. And for me, he is massively letting down Liverpool this season. There's no way you can argue it. The proof's in the put. And there's one certain word I always associate with Mo Salah. X Factor. He lacks severe X Factor. And when I say X Factor, I mean making something out of nothing. When your team need you the most, are you going to get the ball and be the one to be decisive? Not really. You were showing and we're seeing that he hasn't got that. You look at Eden Hazard, who people compare him to all the time, and I'm sure you're tired of this comparison. But you look at when Hazard was at Chelsea, 18-19 season, with a pretty much average squad, Sarri was finding his way. That man carried Chelsea on his back, got them the Europa League final and won them the competition. I ain't seeing nothing like that from Mo Salah. Don't lie to your eyes. This season in the Premier League, he has seven goals, four assists in 20 games. He's en route to have his worst ever statistic season for Liverpool. I mean, the numbers are there. We can see it in the performances. I mean, Haaland came into the league and took his lunch money. Simple as that. Harlan said, what, what chain you got on? Give me that. Snatch this chain. And now, now Harlan's running off with the golden boot. Kane is still putting up a fight, Salah. He's still trying to fight for the Barclays rights. He's not letting Harlan just run off like that. The defence that Salah has put up to, to counter, you know, to counter a hitman like Erling Harlan, has been pathetic. With all the talk about Darwin Nunes and the negative impact that he has, you know, I know he misses chances after chance. But Darwin Nunes in the Premier League has missed 16 big chances. Mohamed Salah is third on that list with 12. And I understand, you know, if you're a shooter, you're going to miss the most chances. Erling Haaland has missed 14. But Erling Haaland also has 
25 plus goals. Salah has seven. Don't lie to your eyes. And that was another episode of FTBL Culture. Guys, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment below as well. Let me know who your five biggest disappointments of the Premier League that I may have missed out on. Let me know in the comments. Make sure you turn on the notifications. That is the most important because you know we are giving you great content on FTBL. We have Final Whistle, Stoppage Time TV, United State of Mind, and of course, FTBL culture. So make sure you're there. I'm Culture Cams and I'm out.